Okay. So now we have Anne, please. She's all, well, you're sorry. Yes, Kira no. Koto, uh, <laughs> Koan Scott Toku Ingwa. Um, I'm here to speak on behalf of Spokes Canterbury. I'm going to zoom through this, and it will be death by PowerPoint. Um, and I'm just not as entertaining as Mark previously, Mark Duff. Um, so my vision for Christchurch is that it should be a great place to live, it should care for people, it should care for the environment, and it should be welcoming and safe for all. And for me, cycling is at the centre of some of that. So Christchurch is actually a, a cycling success story. Build it and they will come. If you look at the household survey from 2020 to 2023, 27.6% um, of people cycled once a month, 8.5 at least 10 times a month, and 4.9 20 times a month. And that 4.9 is a really good achievement. Um, the cycling has increased um, from 2017 to 23, 30% increase across all the counters you have, 42% across the major cycle routes, 50% in the central um, city or edges, and at Charles Street, which is new, the Heathcote Express, it's 39% increase, and Preville Street is 27% increase. That shows that, in actual fact, we're doing the right thing. And when we do the right thing, people will come and they will use it because they feel safe. Um, the current government is talking about the economic benefits of increased cycling. There are lots of them. There's very good health outcomes. It improves well-being. It reduces con congestion. It makes it safe for everyone. So the number of accidents per kilometres travels goes down, and it reduces climate and emissions pollution. What do we need to do? Well, we need to keep doing what we're doing now. We need to finish the major cycle routes, provide new connections to popular destinations, and particularly our schools. We need to continue to enhance cycling in the centre city, increase the slow speed neighbourhoods, because that's the most economic way to increase cycling. Um, continue to widen our park paths and provide safer intersections and crossings for cyclists and pedestrians. Finishing the major cycle routes is really important. And I actually went through the um, LTP and I couldn't work out the finances. I've worked on it two hours trying to create a new spreadsheet, trying to figure out actually how much are you spending every year? And when, I worked, and when you talk about 200 million being spent, all I could find was 8.9 million next year. We should have, tw if you're spending 20 million, it should be 20, if you're spending 200 million, it should be 20 million every year. We should be consistently improving things. And we do need to uh, complete all the major cycle routes, plus another, a couple of others. Each time we complete a section, it brings new, cy new cyclists. We're getting growing demand, and local projects can make a really big difference. There are some really uh, unsafe gaps, and one of the big ones I think school children came and talked to you about recently was, is Northcote Road. There's 700 metres between a cycle route on the, on the QE2 drive um, and the northern line. And you see cyclists from St Bede's and from the other schools going down there all the time, and you think, oh, goodness, with all those trucks, when's the first... Um, fatality going to happen. Um, we also need safer, <coughs> safer speeds around schools, and the uh, Aratai College is a good example of that. The Tikaha surrounding streets is a really good um, example of something that will really improve our city for, for walking and cycling. Um, the Safer Way projects, we've gone all through the consultation on that, and there are some really good ideas, and people are kind of expecting that they will happen. Um, and then we've got some high-use intersections. Um, where the popularity is getting to the point where actually you can't get across the road anymore on a cycle light. Um, and a good one of that is Dean's Ave, but there are five or six others that I could mention, like Colombo Street and... Uh, I won't go through. Um, and then there are some road crossings where you simply can't get across the road if you're a cyclist or a pedestrian. One is Milton Street. Um, another one is Yolte Street at Church Corner. Uh, there are a whole number of them, and if those... Uh, road crossings were fixed, then a, another tranche of people would feel safer in their neighbourhood. I just keep coming back to slow speed zones. You know, it's um, if you get hit by a car at 30, you've got an 80% chance. If you get hit by a car at 50, you've got a 20% chance. 
we have been talking about cycling as gold-plated. Um, and I think in the current environment, we have to start thinking about maybe we trial some other ways of doing things, like temporary cycle, well, cycleway connections. And Park Terrace is actually a really good example of what you can do. It's got solid bollards, so if a car hits it, they won't just come straight through at you. Um, it's got smooth surfaces, it's got a standard width, it's got lower speeds, and it's got, um, for what it has, safe road crossings. So we should actually consider some of those things. We should look at what Wellington's doing in terms of some of the ways that get across the streets. Um, and, but I would really like um, cycling not to be called gold-plated when actually a lot of the work that's being done is to fix the underground services and to fix coal tar and various other things that are under our streets. So let's just budget the cycleway bit and let's put all these other bits into another budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah, you used up all your time, I'm sure, but that was a very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Fiona, please. 